Welcome back, everyone, to Kuan. Last episode, we had tea with uh, Lady Fujiwara, and we explored and investigated a small shrine, one of the older shrines of the manor, if not the oldest one. Remember, if you recall, that shrine was built first, and the Fujiwara mansion was built around it. However, unlike Yinfei's, where the small shrine seemed to be the place to go, it was just another stop for Sakuya on her journey. We hooked up with her brother Doryo, as well as Utsuki and Kureha. Last episode, I did ask about the god of north and the god of south, and Shiny Sorrow mentioned that it might be a reference to two of the four guardian beasts in Chinese astrology, which makes me wonder if they had planned out four different weapon upgrades to find along the way and it just didn't happen. Um, but Azura Dragon would be the god of north and winter, and a vermilion bird would be the god of fire and summer and that would name check the dragon thing that FromSoft loves putting in pretty much all of their games. One of the other things that FromSoft likes putting in all of their games is the struggle mechanic. Um, and Decoy Black Mage mentioned that the struggle mechanic in Kuan comes back in Dark Souls. If the little known mechanic that if you are grappled in Dark Souls, if you mash on all of your buttons, you could break the grapple. Although I was never sure how reliable that was because it never seemed to work for me. Um, anyway, there's a lot to do, and this is probably the most difficult stretch in the game for Sapia. Um, you have boss fight after boss fight. Uh, there's a possibility of hitting three boss fights in this stretch. And one of them is very difficult, so uh, let's see. Um, we've got a lot to do, so let's get to it. And while I walk up, um, what other mechanical similarities do you guys see in modern FromSoft games that might have stemmed from here? Um, that's a discussion I'm planning on having for the, f uh, the finale. So if you want to start talking about that in the comments, that would be great. So we're one step behind our family. And if you notice, they just kind of disappeared. Now, at the outset, you might just brush that off as just the game despawning them, but it looks like they completely missed this body right here. Or maybe they saw it and they just kept walking. A body wrapped with a blood-stained cloth lies here. Its skin is practically mummified. <laughs> And there we see the enemy for the area, which is a uh, monkey. I think it's called a Mushigara. I'm not quite sure. Um, but yeah, it's... Funnily enough, it's kind of referenced in, in Vampire Hunter D, too. It's uh, one of the main baddies. But... Um, that's what the writing in blood on the walls meant by very much earlier when it said monkey see monkey kill anyway here at this altar we'll find the map of the area and taking a quick look we'll see that it's actually not that big of an area and that makes us wonder where to go next so if we go take a right, I'm going to switch my uh, bells around. 
use our some of our heat in. We'll take a little look see. Oh, look, that might be Kureha. The rocks should be able to be used as footholds, and now we're able to jump. And it's along the river, so we can save here if we wanted to. And we find that it's a a trap of a sort. I mean, it looks like Kureha, but it's most certainly not. I'm gonna switch my spells again. Basically with this, as it's switching my camera angle at random, you just kind of have to trust trust that you're going to hit him. So the Yamabito drops us. the vision of Kureha sits on her knees, which is a little telling in and of itself, but what were they protecting? That is the big question here. And they were protecting some more Sen in Seika. Basically, it was a trap. One wonders if the entity that is Kureha Utsuki is trying to pick Sakuya off. Got that was a jump pad. Ah, yeah, they're called um, Mashira. Speaking of the Mashira, we'll run right by them as they drag a corpse off.山に Alright. But the ma Mashira are difficult and they're not worth the resources it would take to kill them. And as Utsuki notes, there is a beast out there. 
waiting to make us dinner. So we have to be very careful. So on our hunt for a mallet to drive down a stake, we find ourselves at this here cottage, but it would do you no good to run straight into the door without looking. If you do, you will be immediately murdered. Do not pass go. Do not collect two hundred dollars. This guy will grab you by the head and run, throw you right in there. So to deal with him, you have to wait until he goes outside. Run in, grab everything. Well, not run in. And get back out again. Not to say you won't fight him. You will. Just not there. There's your fog wall. Oh, wait. I don't think I want to use the Kadyu. I'm gonna use my Sin and Seika. Actually, I have a- I have an idea. That is the Yeti. He is the boss I was most nervous about. And you guys got to see a little bit of Kagutsu Ona playing uh, Distraction. So. Oh. Yes, as you can see, he he has a very small boss area. Um, he's very large, he's got a lot of range, and he hits really hard. He put me into critical with like one and a half hits. It was uh, 
He's not a boss to trifle with. Monkey see, monkey kill, indeed. Well, let's get out of here. And hand Utsuki. The mallet. That was actually a flashback. But that was an odd, that's an odd thing for Utsuki to say. This time I will be more careful. In any case, let's follow. の中の虫は一体何を考えているのでしょうか私思うのですきっととても ずいぶんと遅かったではないか。途中、病に侵されたものどもに道を遮られました。それは相当ここもまずそうだな。これ。ガキなんぞが入り込む。昨夜、私はここにいる。そなたに任せたぞ。Doryo is flirting with with Kureha. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> but uh, the real interesting bit here is that Utsuki thinks Utsuki repeats a phrase she repeats in Yin phase when she's climbing into the wicker basket. She says that she must be dreaming a long, long dream. And that's something she says at Yin phase. What do you guys have to say? You kind of mono dana. <laughs> well, they're still flirting, so let's give a few look sees around here. We'll probably be back here later. As you can see, if you've not already surmised, this is the other mulberry tree. Let's go knock on the front door. Sh 
sure in our belief that Dorio has probably already signed his own death warrant. Here's a save point. But first, we're gonna get attacked because there's a rude boy right here. Very reminiscent of the welcoming committees in Dark Souls 3. Make sure we're not going to miss anything on either side. Over here we're going to pick up the shrine map. Very handy. As you might remember from Yinface, it's the same map. And again, where is Kureha's rooms? At the inner sanctum, we're going to find that an eerie chill is coming from behind the massive door. What lies within? over here is blocked. Does not open from this side. So let's take off. So let's see if there's anything out here. Anything over here. There's a light. And something in the tree. But I'm not going to fight that clothed Gaki, so we're going to keep moving. And we're going to have another boss fountain. First, we're going to find Dokai's book. Dokai's neatly written research report. Investigation of the Gaki. Experiment. Examined characteristics of Gaki. Conditions. One, used a fellow seer for comparison purposes. Two, arranged for the battle in an enclosed area to assess the Gaki's strength accurately. Results. A Gaki was defeated. Two, the power of the cards and fans appears to be effective. Three, Gaki are relatively weak. However, their endurance is something to behold. And some vessels. As well as this grotesque thing. A giant cocoon is pulsating. Let's follow the blood. Where there's blood, there's fire. I think that's how the saying goes. And this looks to be that battle alluded to. Dokai's Book, Volume 3. 
Investigation of cocoons and corpses. Experiment. Investigate relationship between corpses and cocoons and their food. Conditions. Find two identical wicker chests. 2. Remove food, victim, from one chest during experiment. Results. When the food, victim, was removed from one chest, only an incomplete union took place. The creature died at once after it emerged. Food inside the chests, especially the silkworms, seems crucial for the resurrection. The silkworms in this mulberry tree must be endowed with magical powers. And like the life cycle of a real silkworm, they need to digest themselves, and within themselves is basically the stem cells, or they're what is called idea plates, I think, that will allow them to resurrect and metamorphosize. Um, There's a fog wall, as well as Dokai walking around in the background, because that's not disconcerting at all. It's simple. It seems comfortable. Could this be Utsuki's room? And we're going to find a Sugoroku board. Old Sugoroku board used by Utsuki. When both pieces and board are obtained, the Sugoroku can be played. After acquiring Sugoroku pieces from the Yin phase and the board from the Yang phase, save the game and return to the title screen. Select Sugoroku from the title screen to play the game. I don't think I'll be playing it, but it's basically backgammon. And we are going to find a vessel, more dust, and another book of Dokais. This one says, Investigation of the Silk. Experiment. Compare silk thread seals on doors with cocoons in the wicker chest. Conditions. Used a silk used a cocoon still occupied by a human. Used thread remaining after seal had been broken. Investigated vicinity, <laughs> strength, and magical power. Results. Some difference in vicinity. Silk thread slightly stronger. Three higher magical properties in silk thread. Cocoons and silk thread are very similar in nature. Was this silk thread spun from cocoons? And we're going to find Utsuki's diary. April 21st. Another day passed, but father didn't return. I went outdoors for a walk, hoping that would lift my spirits. The irises in the garden are about to bloom. The thought that they might bloom tomorrow made me feel a little more cheerful. April 22nd. It's been drizzling since morning. I can't look after the irises in the rain. Kureha stayed in her room because her body hurts when it rains. I saw a cuckoo land under the eaves. How nice that he sings even in the rain. April 23rd. It rained again today. Not a heavy rain, but a light, steady one. Leafing through father's book, I found a poem about a cuckoo. They say cuckoos are sentimental about the past. My past is the same as my present. I've never left here. I'd like to see what's outside. April 24th. I learned a poem recently. I recited till it annoyed my sister. So I stopped and wrote it down. The village of scattered blossoms, the cuckoo sings for many days of unrequited love and those saved. I wish my sister were as kind to me as she used to be. April 26th. My sister's cough has gotten worse. Bring me a crow, she said. Why do you want a crow? Never mind, just bring me one, she kept saying. I can't go outside and leave my sister alone. This is all my fault. Coming out here, you'll see the, the irises allowing the sun's warmth. Someone has tended them well. But over on 
the side. Should be able to find someone. Some elixir and some dust. Over here, the door is sealed with a year and a seal. And we'll come back to that hole in just a minute. But let's give a little bit of exploration to some places that we've been to and see what's changed. This Dokai is probably going to be a rude boy soon. He's going to drop us another elixir. And that door is sealed. We won't be able to enter that one this playthrough. Or this phase, rather. Some more vessels. Some more Hibari to replace the ones we used. And some Yamabito are still feasting. Over here is the scroll, bamboo cylinder, detailing the shrine origin. Uh, the first priest planted two mulberries in the garden. He pronounced the two trees that would spring from them sacred, to be revered for all time. The shrine must be watched by a member of the Hata clan. The elder priest shall be named Ashia. Some more elixirs. And we're going to find Onibi. We're going to leave those guys be. Oni B is probably the most powerful, one of the most powerful spells. We're going to walk on back and we're going to explore that hole, which should be Utsuki's room. Or the other half of Utsuki's room. We're going to find some more Onibi. And Kureha's diary. When I fell off the cliff, I thought I was going to die. But when I came through, there wasn't even a scratch on me. I thought it was strange awakening in a wicker chest. I asked Utsuki all about it. All she did was cry. So sweet of her to be worried. October 3rd. I've been feeling tired and weak for the past few days. Utsuki keeps asking me if I'm alright. She mustn't find out how bad I really feel. October 13th. There are strange marks all over my body. I'm hiding them the best I can. I'm sure my flesh is starting to rot. I've caught that horrible disease. I looked in all my books, but they don't mention it. 
Utsuki keeps asking me how I feel. I don't like lying. October 25th. Yesterday, I met some twins. I don't know when they arrived, but they told me to sleep with the silkworms in the chest for a night. Maybe I was dreaming, but I was desperate, so I did as they said. When I awoke, my body felt normal. They must have been manifestations of the Mulberry God. November 5th. I played with Utsuki today for the first time in a while. Perhaps because I hadn't been active for some time, I felt flushed, even when night fell. March 4th. Everything will be all right. The twins said that I'll get better if I get inside the cocoon again. They said to look for a rat this time, rather than a silkworm. I must hurry, or my arm will rot and fall off, or maybe my legs. I envy Utsuki for her soft, healthy limbs, healthy arms, legs, and neck. July 4th. When I mentioned the twins to father, he told me about a ritualistic practice involving resurrection and cocoons. He said that a revived corpse will start to rot, at which point it must become a cocoon each time fusing with a larger creature. This needs to be done nine times. July, April 27th, when I woke up inside the wicker chest, I realized that it was Utsuki who pushed me off the cliff. She talks nonsense about irises and poems, while here I am in agony, my body beginning to rot. Ah, I wish I had her healthy skin. And there's Dokai, closing the door. Um, what I failed to mention was when Utsuki snaps in Yin phase after she reads that, she writes down, and then I killed Utsuki, um, from the point of view of Kreha. Dolkai, probably. Explore. And that's blocked off, so there's only one way to go, and that is through here. Run by that rude guy. Super rude. And we'll find that this door is sealed now. Wonder who did that.
久しいな解雇の謎は分かったか私はその謎をクオンの秘訣を解き明かしただがいささか書物に夢中になりすぎたようだうかつにも殺されてしまったよここでな解雇を持っておらんねば危ういところであったな Was Dokai.、Um, he's able to throw out、um, tempests at will. And he also, in this phase, which is, bears a striking difference to Yin phase, he will use his, his fire spells as well as the aforementioned tempests. He is very aggressive. Um, but I was able to stunlock him because there's different cooldowns on the spells I was using.、Um, the powerful spell that Holmes has a much longer cooldown than the other, so you can, you can stagger them and then stagger him. And that's basically what happened there. But on him, he has the Sacred Cloth Mars, which is very important. So, let's go examine his laboratory. But it's a striking difference from Yin because he is notably frightened of you in Yin phase and he seeks to run away. And he's more aggressive with his tempest attack than he, is his, than he doesn't use his like, fire attacks. But here, he's much more confident, much more aggressive. And here we'll get our last fan, which we'll throw on right now. Take this moment to、uh, remove Karyu. And put our workhorse back on. So the sutra still covers the wall, and it is a Chinese poem. The song of Gai Chia. I could lift a mount and quell the world, but even my steed fails me at times absurd. Now that my steed cannot preserve my life, what can I do for you, oh, my dear wife? And we're going to find ourselves a wooden handle, which will come in handy soon.、Um, if, you remember, if you recall Yin phase, there was a sluice we had no idea what to do about because that wasn't for Utsuki, it is for Sakuya. And this is unreadable. But the poem Gaichia, very interesting that it's there. But we also find our first Doman book, document written by Doman concerning silkworms. My investigation of the silkworms worshipped at the shrine are nothing like ordinary silkworms. The parents of the silkworms at this shrine are incarnations of the two mulberry trees. The mulberries on the trees are their eggs. Silkworms born from them have magical powers, they can bring back the dead. But this means they must feed from humans. This dark magic suits me perfectly. 
When the fusion of flesh has occurred nine times, the spell shall be perfected. When I have mastered this magic formula, you will whore yourself before me. And we find Doman's memorandum. Memorandum written by Doman about Kureha. Kureha seems to have entered into a cocoon. Those twins certainly have interesting ideas. She is my daughter, after all. I'm sure her silk threads will be finer than those spun by sick people in the hut. Kureha seems different from the others. Perhaps she's the daughter of the elder priest. It's, that probably should read perhaps because. Now the cards cannot help her, nor will the weapons supposedly endowed with magic powers work. Anyone who encounters her had better run in the other direction. And that is a major clue, because we will run into her. And that tells you to run. But we're also going to get some more Sin and Seca. And some more Hien. A nice bunch. So yes, run away from Kureha when you see her. She is invulnerable to any attack you throw at her. Which, if you think she's the final boss, that almost certainly disabuse you, disabuses you of the notion. Just gonna walk right over Dokai there. Make sure we're all set. And now we need to head back to the tree. Because now we need to find out, go check up on our dead brother. His only real sin was flir <laughs> flirting with the wrong girl. There's a trail of fresh blood. So let's follow it. And you can see in the background that there is a uh, enemy cloud back there, so you, you know something's up. Oh, a wicker box. Take a look. One, one royal wedding. I don't need to see another one. Music stopped. They're gone. And they left behind a bloodstained cloth. But you can hide inside it, so let's do that. Nothing? Nothing? Well, 
Guess there's nothing left to see here. Oh no! Return of Dol Dorio. So we're just gonna hide. And get a, a good look at the Dorio Pureha combination. That's that. You'll never see them again. So, uh, let's see what else. Apparently, there's nothing, nothing in particular that they do as a boss. That's all that different from anybody else. But it is funny that it is pretty much an optional fight, and you can basically juke them. The time-honored from South tradition of juking the enemy continues. Alright, so now we have to head over to the sluice. Let's go check around for that. I forget exactly which side it's on. Guess we're gonna have some company. As we get over there. There's another save point. And so we find a key. It appears the floodgate has been raised. Does something need to be inserted in order to make this operate? Yes, and we already have it. So let's throw that in. Uh-oh. Uh, there's... there's somebody 
We don't want any part of. But what do we get for the floodgates is we get the mirror. There's a reflection in the water from the moonlight. A truth mirror. It looks like it has a tree in the middle of it. Mirror mounted on a plinth used for rituals. And these rude guys, they spawn because you picked it up. And I'm just gonna tell them see you later. Meanwhile, there's Koreha. She's completely invulnerable, don't even try. He's really mad we stopped the floodgates, I guess. And now we have to run back to where we were. Check out the mulberry tree. Kaiko no Kuba Shibito Yomiga Erase, Yamai Nyokas, Shiroi Kaiko no Hisom Shinbok. Now we have completed that entire area. And thinking back to Yin phase, when you recall that one of the twins was barred to a crisp, that is what happened. We're going to find a note from Yoshimaru. The elder priest placed a mirror on a plinth and opened the cave. I'm sure that mirror was inside the three-legged shrine gate. And that's your clue if you came down here first. This looks like roots. Make sure there's nothing we're gonna miss over here, where the bodies of Utsuki and Kudeha fell. And that was a mistake on my part, but you got to see a huge trap in the making there. If you ran it all over here, you're going to get super ambush. It's a small shrine. The shrine contains a plinth, which is used to hold something. And we already have that something, so let's put it in. That opens the door, and we have entry. Back in the underground with us. And so, I think that's going to do it for this video. Thank you very much for joining me today, and I will see you as we conclude, because it should be the last bit, of Yang Phase.
let's send our sin down the river. Thank you very much for joining me, and I will see you next time.